Hi, welcome to the channel and today I'll be reviewing the NED 8020E speakers made about 1988 by Kef for NED and I'm guessing these would have retailed for about £80, $120 back then with the exchange rate maybe. Uh, if anyone knows exactly what they went for, maybe they could leave it in the description down the bottom. Couldn't really find much detail about the price. It was a great detail about the speaker really, to be honest, compared with some speakers. But uh, these, these are about 8 inches in uh, width, about 7 deep and about 13 and a half roughly in height. Um, I'll, I'll show you a proper picture if you can't see them I'll come up in a short bit anyway. One inch dome tweeter and I think that's about six and a half inches from uh, rubber to rubber so to speak on the on the base unit. Quite, you know, quite a reasonably sized base unit for how big the actual speaker is in this. And if we spin it round, it's just got the normal screw terminals at the back and you can also slide in a banana clip there. These are rated at four ohms and 60 watts. Very solidly built for how small they are. Well, any small speaker's quite solidly built anyway because, you know, it's all holding itself together. There's not much wobbling about going on because it's, it's so small anyway. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just, we're going to have a look, like I say, let's have a look at the front of it first. That's it laying down on the bench. And I'm going to whip it open. Uh, there's the driver, the back of the driver. I'll uh, give you an idea of the magnet. If we pan out a little bit, that gives you more of an idea how big the magnet is. Not a bad size magnet for the speaker. There's the tweeter with Kef written on it. And uh, if we pan out a bit more, you can see it's quite, you know, it's quite a bit of foam packed in there. And in fact, so I pulled a bit out there, as you can see, this is from the behind the back of the driver unit. And uh, there's a great big roll of it there. I've never seen so much foam in a speaker, to be honest with you, especially this small as well. Like, they absolutely rammed it in there. It's just about enough room to get the drivers and uh, crossover in there. I mean, uh, if, you didn't, if you bought the speaker and didn't like it, at least you could uh, maybe insulate your loft with that foam or something. You'd be able to do three or four runs of it without a waterfall. Okay, so yeah, there's the... Uh, there's a crossover there, uh, and it's quite a few components on this crossover. I was quite surprised how many there was, so it's quite a bit of filtering going on there. At some stage, I will whip it out and draw a circuit diagram on that and see what's happening with that, I think. Um, and there's Kef written on the back of it there, just to let you know that uh, it's in fact made by Kef. And it's actually got written on the back of this speaker, made by Kef for that as well, and the uh, little sticker. Um, okay. Um, how did it sound? I mean, I compared it with other speakers, had a few amplifiers on it and whatever, I mean, the other speakers. I mainly compared it with the Morgan Short 10, because that's probably one of the better speakers I've got at the moment, um, book size wise. And it's probably like, that probably went for about 80 quid, this probably went for 80 quid. So it's in that kind of ballpark figure as well. So that's a fair comparison, I think. Uh, you know, don't remember these ain't like 800 pound speakers, these are 80 pound speakers. So obviously reviews based on Kind of that, you know, these are not going to be crystal clear, unbelievable, like it's just not going to happen. Even speakers today for £800, probably, you know, some of them are, are not like that anyway. But, um, yeah, all in all, I found the, um, I start off with a treble. I found the treble, treble shy on this speaker. I don't know if it's anything to do with the crossover. Uh, and I, I will change a few capacitors at some stage and maybe come back with it and give an update. But uh, for the time being, as I got it, I found the treble a bit shy on this speaker. I mean, I tried all the amps and all the amps, I'm turning it up one or two maybe three or a couple of them to, to get the treble up to you know get to get some spark into that treble so to speak just found it a bit shy of the treble uh vocals were okay they sounded quite good but a little bit subdued you know once i started turning that treble up and that obviously lifted the uh the vocals up as well so that they were fine then you know what i mean they sounded nice they sounded fine just then just needed a little bit of help there uh the vocals and that um as for the bass the bass sounded nice i mean this bass has got a lot lot more bass than the Morden Short 10s, uh, the JPWs I reviewed, uh, much better bass. It's not so much, it's not a false bass like the uh, the Wolfdale Diamond 9s, you know what I mean? It's just a false bass kind of thing, it's forced upon the speaker. This this is more like a, a, you know, a normal bass, and it's quite bassy. For how big it is, I was quite surprised how much bass was in the speaker, like, you know what I mean? So the bass was fine. In fact, on a couple of amps, I was turning the bass down just one notch or whatever. It's, it did sound a little bit boxy, I must admit, it did sound a little bit boxy. But other than that, it was fine, like, you know what I mean? Overall, the bass, drums, everything, you know, everything sounded nice, you know what I mean? Once you've got, like, say, turn the treble up a bit, you've got the old drums and hi-hats and all that, cymbals, and, and it sounded nice, vocals sounded nice. All in all, you know, it was, it was a good little speaker, it definitely is, like, you know what I mean? You're going to pick up one of these for 30 or 40 pound on eBay at the moment, 40 or 50 dollars, something like that. You know, it's, it's, it's a good buy, it really is, it's a good buy. And I rate it against the more than short tenure, you know, if I'm kind of doing a comparison, I'd say it's not quite, not quite as detailed, just slightly ducking under with the detail compared with that Morning Short 10. I just found that just a little bit more detail on that, but it makes up for it with this bass, you know what I mean? This bass brings it back. Like I say, you can, you can help the treble there, that it's a bit treble shy, you can help it out with the controls. 
and I just found this was, you know, overall a better speaker, like, you know what I mean? Even though I say it's not quite as detailed. If you're looking for detail, but going to lose quite a bit of bass in the morning short tens for you. But if you want, like, a bit more of an all-rounder and the bass up kind of thing, this is the one, like, out of the two. So, you know, like, if I had to put them against each other, I'll put this just in front of the morning short ten. So, um, yeah, I'll put this in front of the morning short ten. If I had a choice, then go to the morning short ten, so to speak. So I hope that's been some help to some people. Uh, are still looking around for a bookshelf or whatever and there's so many of them out there to choose from uh, and you know this is one I definitely recommend like I say it was made by Kev so that probably gives it just a, another little bit of stamp of endorsement as well and I know there's a you know looking at a few forums and that there's it, people looking out for this speaker like you know what I mean but not many of them enough I don't think you know it's just a few here and there and, and some of these posts are a few years old now so they've probably got hold of them so um, you know you may be one just ducking under the radar that you can kind of nip in and grab for 30 quid and got yourself a bargain. Okay, until the next video, I'll say you all. I'll say you all soon. I'll see you all soon, and I'll speak to you later. Well, I'll do something, whatever it is. See you soon.